So here we are again. It's a, another night, and I'm going to start roughing out this bird. Probably one of the more tenser and actually more relaxing activities I can do bird curving. It's very relaxing because I just love the feeling of the wood in my hand, and I love the way the, the cutter cuts into it. What I'm using to cut through this, by the way, is I'm using my RAM power tool, and I'm using a cardboard cut saw. Now, you don't have to have a RAM tool or carbide cuts all to do this. You can do the same with a knife. Just get in there and whittle away. I've done more than a few birds with my knife. Uh, you don't even need a fancy one. You just have to get in there. If using basswood, it's not hard to do. In fact, if you're using a knife, basswood's actually pretty good. If you notice, there's a sort of this fuzzy effect on the edge of the cut saw. That's what you get with basswood. You don't get that with tupelo. Um, this is just better with a knife but you know I like using the cut saw I like the way that the tool just cuts through I like the feeling of it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off remember I talked about in the last one the quarters there's a there's a there's a top quarter and there's a quarter on the sides and a quarter on the top and you can just basically take those at a 45 degree angle so that's what I'm doing tonight I'm just gonna grind those down to roughly a 45 degree I know that's safe wood it can go now I said this is the most relaxing, but it's also the most nerve-wracking activity you can do too, because the wood there's a lot of wood there. There's there's a there's a lot of wood around the tail. There's a lot of wood around the head. It's got to go. You know it's got to go. But there's something about taking that wood away that still to this day makes me a little nervous. And I'm thinking to myself, what if I got to take something off I shouldn't? That's why it's important to measure. And you have to trust your measurements. Those measurements are your guide. And after that, I mean, you, you, those lines, if you're going to start, you know, you get closer and closer, don't go over the line. Stay outside those lines. But as you go, you got to get as close as you can. You're going to start looking at, well, does this look even? Does this look, you know, does this make sense? For the time being, I'm going to trust my eyes. Later on, you're going to get where those lines are and it's useful. And you're going to trust more to, well, there's something wrong. I don't know what. I mean, I don't know every aspect of bird anatomy, but I know that's a funny looking bird. Trust that. Trust that feeling that I, I can't tell you why it's wrong. I just look at it. I know it's wrong. And that's my guide when I'm going through this process. So trust the lines. Trust that feeling that something doesn't look right. You're trying to make it look even as much as you can. Now I'm taking those quarters off at 45 degrees, but where I'm cutting into the wood, like at the tail there, my goal is a straight up and down cut. I want a nice, you know, 90 degree shear of the wood because, um, you know, basically if you look at that pattern we're working from orthographically, there is no wood there. I mean, that's, that's, that's just space there. And I need to carve that wood off the tail and as much as I can off the head. So it looks like that space. Another thing I want to talk about for the moment is the importance of getting rid of the dust. If you're using some kind of a power tool like that, you're going to create dust. Um, in my early days, I didn't have a nice extractor like this. I saved up for that. But uh, if you're doing this and you don't have an extractor, I'm asking you please to wear a mask. It's really important. You do not want this in your lungs. I'm using basswood. It's not so bad. Tupelo, I've been told, is worse. That's the other kind of wood I will carve from. Sometimes butternut, if I'm carving by hand. But I've been told tubulo is really not good for the lungs. So regardless, take no chances at all. Protect your health. This is a good hobby, and you want to be doing this well into your old age. And uh, I think it's really important that you, you watch out for your lungs. You protect them. You get this dust away from you. So I've got a really good extractor, so I'm not too worried about it. be honest with you the mask every time I wear it I would fog up my glasses inside and have to stop curving every couple of seconds so I'm relying on that extractor maybe maybe I shouldn't rely on it as much as I do but for the time being I am there's a 45 degree cut off the belly that line halfway between the edge of the bird and the center of the bird now that's the quarter and there's a quarter on the side and there's a quarter on the bottom and if I cut to those quarters in a nice straight line it'll look like a, when you look at the bird head on it'll look like a 
a hexag uh, an octagonal bird, I guess, is what you want. So there'll be a top, a bottom, a side, two sides, and then there'll be these, where the corners were, these nice, uh, flat lines. And I'm going to carve into the tail. This really is one of the best escapes I know of. I work in kind of a tense job. And I'm getting to this point in my life now where, um, you know, when you started in a place like I did, you come in as a young fella, and these older guys are giving you the advice, and they're handing down wisdom. And back in my day, they really did hand down some pretty good wisdom. But now, as I'm going along, and I realize I've come to a time now where I'm older than the people who are managing me, and they're looking at me, and they're giving me advice, and I'm looking at them going, yeah, that's something a manager told me about three managers ago, and that just doesn't work. And uh, thank you, I appreciate, it's like a checklist, they have to do this, but I'm not really as interested anymore. I've become that old curmudgeon, I guess. So I could get testy and cranky and realize that the uh, something annoying about these kids who don't, or these younger people who don't know as much, I think, about the job as I do, telling me how to do my job. Or I could just, uh, you know, I'm not the kind of guy who goes home and yells at his wife or kicks the dog or anything like that. I can't do that. You know, work stays at work and home is home. And home is good. I'm not angry or upset about anything at home. But if I'm having a bad work day, this sort of brings balance back to everything. I'm not really thinking about anything when I'm doing this. I just sort of zone out. I look for the lines. It's a little like when you're a kid and you're coloring. Do you, ever, do you remember being a kid and you'd zone out with a coloring book and some crayons and you just go? That's kind of what this is. You've drawn those lines. You grab, It's a little more manually. I guess you got power tools going now, but just go in and go find those lines and you just keep taking away wood until it looks right or in this case at this early stage until it looks even you want that bird to look left and right symmetrical unless you purposely did a, a bird with say one wing up and one wing dropped a bit which is a very nice effect and you know it's going to be a little different um, then you're trying for a, a more or less symmetrical effect and so if that's all you're aiming for and you've already got your lines and you trust your lines you trust your work from earlier then you can just go ahead and maybe grind through something somebody said that day. Grind through some irritating person who cut you off if you take that home with you. I generally don't take traffic home with me. I leave that stuff behind. But if there's something going on or maybe something annoying at work, you disappear into the workshop. This whole job, this this second, uh, this, this roughing out rather, I don't think it took me more than half an hour to roughly find the bird. And I still have a lot of wood on there. It's a bit weird getting old, I think. Older. I know there's some people out there probably listening going, wait till you turn 80, mister. I'm not 80 yet. But I'm just noticing, I guess... I'm not old, but I'm beginning to notice some things that I take for granted being taken away. There's a, that muscle ache. You're like, geez, that should have been gone a long time ago. Not quite gone yet. Something I lifted I shouldn't have. Little stuff like that, you're thinking. And for the first time, I'm beginning to think, hey, retirement, what a great idea. I could do this for retirement. I could do this now. I'd be happy to go just retire today and go down to the basement and carve birds. We saw an indigo. We saw a snow bunting today, which is pretty rare. I hardly ever see those. Although the last time I saw a snow bunting, they were bright white, and these ones weren't. I had to go look up to find what kind of a bird it was, but I suspect it because of the flocking behavior. I might take that bird on next. It's funny how much I spend working on this bird, and I'm already thinking about the next one. A 
Now the head's a little tricky. You do want a straight up and down cut where those lines are that you drew. I mean, when I was starting, and maybe I should have again, it's, it's okay to draw those lines on the top and on the bottom. So you know where you're cutting to. You do want that up and down cut. You know that there's, there's way too much wood there. But remember, there's also some body there. The head comes back just so far and then it flares out into the shoulders. So you got to go up and down. You got to take that wood straight down, but only back to a point. Somewhere in there is those, those wrists. You know that when the bird is resting and there's that curved part on the front of the wing? That's actually the wrist of the bird. That curved front. You got to respect that wrist. It's there somewhere. But for the most part, see that head? It's still too fat and bulbous. It's... It's got to come down. It's not down enough. So you got to find the courage, get in there and go, okay, Wood, you got to go. And I can't, I still think it's funny. You look at that and you think, wow, why does I, why do I get nervous? There's still so much wood there. You look at the pattern, you realize that even with this, those lines are extra safe, extra safe. There's still a lot more wood to come off, but I still go in with that same hesitation. Maybe not the same as when I was starting out, but there's still a little uh, respect for my art. I'll put it that way. I love what I do and I respect my art. And there's nothing I, I hate worse than the idea that, okay, well, there's some kindling for the fire. I mean, I haven't invested that much time and it probably isn't that big a deal, but I tend to fall in love with each and every piece in some way. one has its own personality before I'm done and as you go along you see the little mistakes you make and maybe nobody else know they're there but you can see them and that becomes part of the personality and the piece doubly so when you're doing on a chickadee because they've got so much personality they're very cheerful winter time here at this time of year and uh, they're always a cheerful arrival with the bird feeder now the eyes of course they're in the wrong place but <clears throat> I have to remember they're going to be in the wrong place but they still once those eyes are there they do kind of bring some life to the bird even if they are slightly out of, out of spot, they do make the bird look, I don't know, more interesting. It's certainly a lot more fun than when there's just a piece of wood there. I'll have to fill those in soon. But I'm not really in any hurry to do that yet. If you do decide to use a knife, remember the importance of sharpening it often. You don't need the greatest knife in the universe, but if you do, you should get a grinding stone and a leather strop and know how to sharpen a knife. I've never been an expert at sharpening the knife, but I know there's some good YouTube videos on it. Oop, now you see, I'm forcing it a bit. Nope, shouldn't do that. Back it away. Um, it will chatter if you put the, the wood has got a grain to it. And if I try to force things too much, it will chatter and it'll jump in my hand. You know, that's some back off. Just back it off, slow it down, try it again. Or even reverse the direction of the spinning of the, of the head. That can help too, maybe come at it from another direction. I kind of left things the way they were to a certain extent for this one so that, well, I, I was trying to make sure you could see what I was doing. Ordinarily, I would, be flipping the speeds or flipping the not the speed um, I get a pretty good speed on there I flip the direction and I would get it up closer to my face so that I could see a little better but that doesn't make for a very good presentation on video all you can see is my lap for half an hour I'm 
I'm spending a lot longer on the head here because I'm trying to find that good 90 degree angle up and down that works well with the body. I don't really want to get into rounding the body right too much yet. It's tempting. Sometimes what I'm thinking, like, should I cut some more? And I'm hesitating. I'll go off and fiddle with the body a little bit or fiddle with some other bit just to refine a little bit. But I know my goal is to get a nice square looking head. I know it sounds kind of funny, but if I start rounding too soon, I could do it in the wrong way in the wrong spot. I've got to have a plan. Right now, I've just got to get rid of wood. If I keep it at 90 degrees, it's easier to match to the diagram. So I want a very squarish looking bird still. I'm just trying to get rid of some redundant wood. This is a roughing out. This isn't an actual carving yet. That's why I'm using a more aggressive bit. Later on, I'll use something a little more gentle, a little more gentle. The wood won't come off as fast. I can take my time, but it'll also polish the wood a little bit more too. Because this cuts all leaves little gouges and it's hard to see, but if you see it just right, there's little gouges into the wood where the cuts all went through. I can see them on the video. It removes wood quickly, but it doesn't leave a smooth surface behind. It's just for rapid elimination. That's where the courage comes in. You gotta just get in there and just get rid of that wood. The bird's trapped in there somewhere. We gotta find her. Or him. Don't do too many female birds because the colors are better on the males. That head is still not quite 90 degrees up and down. That head-shoulder combination gives me a hard time. In retrospect, I should have drawn in the shoulder a little better. Keep the chest flat there. You see, I, I don't want to round the chest. But on the other hand, keep in mind, there aren't any square surfaces on a bird. So that nine, that 45 degree we did earlier, I'm just going to refine a little bit, make it a little bit nicer. Which in turn helps me find the neck and head a little bit more. I'm getting very close, very close to cheek size on the head here, which is nice. That's the width of the head that we're cutting to is his cheeks, which is the widest part of the face. done just about everything I can do with these lines. I've roughed out a bird, more or less. Pretty happy. I want to get in there and do more, but you know, it's dangerous to do that without more lines. I need my lines to keep me on the straight and narrow. If you start eyeballing at this stage, it's well, it's never going to result in a good product. you got to keep it anatomical. You've got to keep it true to the bird follow the pattern the pattern is your guide so it's time to put the cutting tool down and get a hold of my pencil and go a little further so I got my pencil I know there's more wood to get rid of there he's still too fat in the back end of the body he with those 90 degree cuts and the head is just it's enormous so what I've done is I've drawn in the body according to the pattern I know it's there somewhere, right there. And that extra wood, well, it's just, if I get the pattern, 
on the back here, it's look, it's still very square. I've got, this is supposed to carve in toward the tail and I've got a very square end. So I can afford to take off some more wood. That's where the wings are. And that wing, those wings are the widest part at that back end. So yeah, see, the wings are very safe. The wings go back toward the tail from the shoulder. So I noticed even, even when I get rid of this, there's still going to be extra wood. So that line, all that's got to go and all that's got to go. And then there's the head. Well, what I did is I took a little time and I drew the width of the beak. I knew where the beak was meeting the head, just a quick measurement. And I know where the width of the beak is. From there, I did a very round, but I rounded out a little bit. Didn't try to make it look exactly like the bird's width of its head. This is still the roughing out. So I did a round, much more round than the actual chickadee. And I'm going to take uh, that hard cuts all off. I'm still going to use a fairly aggressive bit. I'm still roughing out, but I'm going to bring it down to this blue one. And it still does a pretty good job of roughing out. I mean, I could have done the whole thing with this blue one, but it's just not quite as rough. And I'm getting it closer now to the head. So, especially around the beak. Let's go in. Let's rough away some more of the body. Again, still trying for that 90 degree cut. By 90 degree, I mean, if I look down at the bird from the top, looking absolutely from the top middle, I don't want to see anything sticking out from either side of that line. I don't want it caving in underneath the line. I don't want it bulging out underneath that line. That line I drew has to be the the whole body all the way down the side if I held up a a, a piece of um, uh, 90 degree if I held a, a 90 degree angle like I've got a, a 90 a square if I put a square up against the side of it uh, like a square like a carpenter square I should see it should be a butt up against the body from top to bottom not perfectly I'm not trying to do mathematics here, but roughly I'm eyeballing so it looks like it goes straight down below that line. That's what I mean by a 90 degree cut to the body. I'm not going for much for roundness. I'm just trying to eliminate wood I know that doesn't belong there. And the more wood of this, this extra wood I remove, it seemed like it was looking pretty good, but the more of this wood I remove, the better it's getting. to reverse direction makes it so I can show it on the camera a little better I'm trying to draw away toward I don't try to cut toward myself I always try to put you know send the chips away from me as I switch sides it's sometimes easier to switch change the reverse the direction of the cut saw I'm not sure this is called the cut saw. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's it's another rough bird blue bit. I call it my blue bit. It's a cylinder. It's a cylinder. I go to trade shows, and something a wise man once told me that you'll go there and you will pick up, you know, two or three bits, the latest thing, whatever people say you have to have, but. You always end up, I got a, he said, you'll end up with a tray full of these. Some of them showed me hundreds, he said, but they, more than one have told me this. You always end up going back to the same four or five. <laughs> this is one of my go-tos, that and the cuts all. I like a cylindrical bit because as I said, when you're roughing out, you need those 90 degree angles. If I use a round bit, like a ball cutter, it's harder to get those nice 90, even that doesn't look right. It just looks a little bulby on the, on the on the left side of the bird. So I'm gonna work on that. Ah, not about that, I, was, I agree with me. Um, because that's what I'm working on. 
cylindrical uh, the, the cylinders though they'll still give you those 90 degrees so that's why it's it's my preferred favorite for roughing out usually start off with something a little less important like the tail before I get into the head puts my hand back into holding the machine in my hand then I'll go around something a little more sensitive like the face now eventually that will curve right around like a nice nice soft arc underneath the tail where the rump is I'm still not doing that yet I'm still keeping it nice and square but you can start to see the beginning of the idea of where that's going to curve underneath the wing flat surfaces some parts of it the bird you can clearly see I haven't even carved off yet I haven't even roughed in so this is a very rough end but if I can find the head and the tail and some of the main features I feel a little more confident about going after some of the other features starting to feel like maybe I'm getting a little too aggressive on the tail maybe I'll leave that be for a bit and think about it let's switch ends and go to the head now because I know there's a lot of wood there it's got to go right around that beak now I'm certainly not going to use a cut saw to get right down to the detail of the beak I'm still going to leave a little square in the front but a lot of that wood's got to go in the face you can see in the diagram how it just there's a there's a nice get the, the whole face comes to a nice point and right now it's inside of a block so you know some more of this has got to go I'm reversing the cuts all direction again I want to get this right just around the face I don't want it going in the wrong direction it's got to be a nice whoops actually got it going in the wrong direction right now slightly setting the chips toward myself but I'm also trying to get this on the camera too as you can see nice and 90 degree all the way across and it's scary around the face it really is but you have to trust those cheeks are the outer marker that's the outermost width it's okay if the top part of the head comes in because the top part of the head's got to come in a lot more than those cheeks if you carve to the width of the cheeks you're going to be okay I'm healing it a little bit the end of this cut saw is flat I don't like unlike my carbide cut saw the, the the top part of this is flat it's blunt it isn't going to hurt anything it isn't going to cut so I can carve it a little bit, knowing I'm not going to accidentally chip away at the beak when I get near the face like this. That's why I switched to this blue one. The top edge being flat, it just doesn't cut wood. I already feel like I'm coming to the limit what I know I can cut I 
don't want to take off too much. Now, because I said, I think I've said before, there is going to be some distortion on the face now. The head is pointed the right way, but the bird is cut. The original blank was cut like it's looking straight ahead. So that's kind of making his head look a little corkscrewed. The slope is pointing forward, not to the side. The bird is cut looking to the side. I'm cutting it now. I'm cutting it in to look to the side. But the actual original blank is sloping down, looking forward. So that's causing this sort of weird distortion. And you have to fight that. That's going to look weird. It's going to make you second guess yourself. It's another good reason to draw those lines and trust them. lines are on the top remember that's not the top of the head that's where the cheeks are we're going to do new lines for the top of the head soon a bird's face basically from top down is in three layers there's the cheeks that's the widest part of the head so that's what we're cutting to now then there's the, the eye ridge that's the part over the eye that's the next widest part we'll cut down to that next but inside there, there's also the eye channel. That's, a, that's sort of a, an indentation between the cheeks and the head. So the beer, bird can look down at its own beak and see the tip of its own beak so it knows what it's eating. There's still a lot more wood there to come off. But finding where the face is, finding where the head is, that can help a lot. It's starting to look a little more like a chickadee. to see the personality there already. That's what I'm looking for. Personality comes from the face and the expressions. And there's a little bit of a face there now. Next, we'll do some more roughing out for more detail. <laughs> 